now for a problem afflicting men. According to Cancer Research UK, 32,000 new cases of prostate cancer are diagnosed every year. Statistics show that those of Afro-Caribbean origin are more at risk from the disease than white men. And yet, according to a recent study by the University of Warwick, black men who develop prostate cancer are not being given the information and support they need. But, as Michelle Robinson reports, moves are already underway to redress the balance. 77-year-old Leslie Saunders has recently been diagnosed with early-stage prostate cancer and is undergoing treatment. He's come to the Prostate Cancer Forum at Castle Vale in Birmingham to share his experience with others. If anything that I say go out in the community and encourage people to seek um, advice from your GP at, at early days, or if there are any little symptoms that you may suspect, say it could be something not right, go and seek, and, and seek advice from your GP. Latest figures show nearly 32,000 men in the UK are diagnosed with prostate cancer each year, and more than 10,000 die. Afro-Caribbean men in Britain are three times more susceptible to the disease than the indigenous population. A project at Warwick University's medical school, in conjunction with Cancer Research UK, is trying to identify the information needs of prostate cancer sufferers from the Afro-Caribbean community, and also examine life and health issues amongst those without the disease. The money we got for, for this project was for a, a pilot study, so we knew we could be quite innovative with our methods because this was just a small amount of money which hopefully would generate some ideas for going on for a bigger study because it was un an uncharted area. So I got two interviewers um, who knew the local communities in Birmingham very well and uh, had a, a lot of sort of um, experience with community groups. And rather than go through hospitals or GP practices, they used their community contacts to get in touch with African Caribbean men. First of all, men in general, and then men with prostate cancer, to get them together to, um, for some focus groups. I was quite, uh, quite surprised that there were things which um, people were still holding on to. Um, I'll use a phrase, back, of it, back, up, back home. Um, in terms of the West Indies, in terms of Jamaica and things of that nature, and they still held to those traditions. It could well be herbals and things of that nature. Majority um, of individuals that I know, friends and so forth, they're not readily go to the doctors, and uh, you know they will openly say, "Oh, I ain't been to the doctors for two years, three years," um, and because of not going as well, it gives. Uh, you know, can be a false sense of security. We get this feeling that, well, we must be okay because we're not going to the doctors and so forth. So from that respect, I think that most of my f um, friends or colleagues would have very little knowledge about prostate cancer unless I think my knowledge has increased because it's hit the family. Had it not hit the family, it'd probably be something that I'd detach myself from. How do you think the awareness of prostate cancer among the African Caribbean community can actually be raised? I think the best way is probably to use um, role models, whether they're like local actors, local sportsmen and sportswomen. I think that will help a lot because I think a lot of the younger generation who are into different sort of things in life, they take note of people that are in the limelight, so I think that will be a very good way to help. The pilot study is at the halfway stage, but Earl is hopeful that the pioneering project will help bring about change. From a personal standpoint, I've had a member of my family that has passed away from prostate cancer. So for me, it's quite important that this type of research is not just a one-off, and I don't believe that's the case. I think cancer, cancer research will, will be taking it on further, uh, and that's really great.